Hi everyone, welcome to another screencast video brought to you by Zan Ta from Reaper Products. Today's presentation will be on what's new in Autodesk AutoCAD Architecture 2017. Our agenda will focus in on the Reaper Products offerings, the new features of the uh, AutoCAD Architecture 2017 software, and then actually getting into the software itself. For those of you who are not aware, Repo Products has been in the business for well over 35 years. We are based in Smyrna, Georgia, and we have a very diversified company and we offer quite a few services. We are uh, <coughs> resellers for Xerox, Canon, Ose, Faro, and we are also an Autodesk Gold Partner uh, reseller. So we also sell and support all of the Autodesk products as well as education, training, uh, implementation, customization. We also have a 3D reality capture division that works with using ferro laser scanning uh, devices. We have a full printing production environment uh, in the offices downstairs that allows us to print small and large wide format uh, prints for all of our clients. We also have a digital plan room to hold all the digital data as well. We have a sister company called the Color Spot that's up in Marietta and their main focus is on graphics, vehicle graphics, signage, uh, wayfaring, things like that. So if you are local and you want to get a quick tour, <clears throat> come stop by the office and ask anybody to stop what they're doing and they'll be more than willing to help you with uh, a tour of our facilities. So let's jump into all the new features and enhancements in Autodesk AutoCAD Architecture 2017. We can get into different features such as live sectioning XREF support. In other words, when we're working with AutoCAD Architecture and you have an, a section that has been generated from an AEC um, annotation object, when you select the actual section, you can use Edit Live Section and just modify that section at will. Everything will stay linked, everything will update accordingly, and even nested XREFs as well. So the reference in place X referencing command functions transparently, if you will. When we look at the sections, you actually have an option now to choose refresh on open, and that basically means that anytime you open up that particular section <clears throat> or the file that that section is in, the section will refresh itself automatically. And this is a nice feature because sometimes you might be working on the plan view and you forget to update the section. When you're working with the section uh, and the actual annotation of that section, you can select that section line and you can actually start to use some of the contextual grips that are available and uh, introduce things such as offsetting it, uh, adding a vertex, uh, adding a parallel jog, or moving it or removing the actual grip. In the new style browser, you have the ability to specify adding directories of not just a drawing, but all the drawings at once. You can include folders and subfolders. It gives you access to all the different styles that are available. And <clears throat> instead of basically using the generic style manager to open and, and work with a single style file, you can actually bring all of them in at one shot. The style browser obviously has been enhanced and updated for drop down list and auto scrolling, just makes it a little easier to function with. And the style browser has also been updated to allow you to input content coming from your A360 cloud account. And they've actually updated the style browser so you can actually close it with a command line. And its placement in the ribbon is a bit more logical. <clears throat> if you're working with the roof command, uh, after you've created the roof, you now have the ability to specify adding vertexes, removing them, uh, offsetting a straight edge, and even taking a straight edge and turning it into an arc. So it's just a little bit more grip uh, manipulation capability. It's very similar, if you will, to say 
if you have a hatch and you select the hatch you'll get the perimeter boundary of that hatch and it also has grips and markers that allow you to add vertexes, convert lines to arcs, and arcs back to lines. You also have the ability, a nice little new feature, when you're working with the commands like wall, curtain wall, railing, slab, roof slab, and roof, you can actually tell it to use a subcommand of a shape. For example, a rectangle, a circle, a polygon. So you can very quickly generate the data that you need to generate. And that's it. Let's go ahead and jump into the AutoCAD architecture software and take a look at some of these new features. So here I am in AutoCAD architecture 2017 and the first feature I'd like to look at is the editing of a section in live mode. What that means is as follows. I have a section here that's been created using the AEC object annotation tools. If I select it, you'll see in the uh, contextual tab of the ribbon, 2D section elevation. You'll see under the modify panel a command called edit live section. If I select this, it allows me to actually edit into that live section. It creates that link between the section and the plan view. If you have an extra, for example, that's inside, if you double click it, <clears throat> it automatically enables X referencing in place and it's automatic. There's no dialog box that pops up. And you can start to work with objects and you know design and do things that you need to do. When you're finished, you can end this live section in command and save any changes that you have. And it will drill down into all of the XRefs and linking and update everything accordingly. Another new feature is when you take a look at this particular live section and you go to its properties, You'll notice here in the general portion of the properties panel, there is now a refresh on open feature. By default, it's set to no. So if you change it to yes and you save your file, the next time you open up that particular file, it will refresh automatically. Another new feature in Revit in Autodesk AutoCAD Architecture 2017 is being able to modify the section defining line. And what that means is as follows. If I select this particular line, I've got my sectioning tool here. And there's some grips now that I can just hover my mouse over and I can do things like offset, in other words, move its position. I can add a vertex if I need to add a vertex. I can remove the vertex if I need to remove the vertex. I can also click add parallel jog and create a parallel jog if I need to. And so you can kind of manipulate and adjust this. When this is finished, you can go ahead and either generate your own section independent or just select the one that you already have and refresh it and you'll see the changes automatically. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the style browser features. If you head over to the home tab of the ribbon under the tools, you'll see style browser. I have mine turned on already. It's docked on the right hand side. So I'll expand it for us and kind of push it out so it's floating. And the way they've enhanced it is as follows. When you select the pull down, your menu will drop down and you can uh, very quickly easily see how it's organized a little bit better than before. You can see that you have a drawing source pull down as well. So you can choose between the content library drawings or the project standard drawings or any currently opened drawings. When you're looking at the drawing file drop down, you're going to see your current drawing and any other style based files you've inserted. Now I've actually inserted all of mine and the easiest way that I did that is by clicking manage content browser. You'll notice that this window pops up and it lists all the style DWG files that I've loaded into this particular file. <clears throat> I don't have to go over to the style manager window and right click and say open file. It's, that's not that old method anymore. So I can click add drawings and it'll take me to the imperial subfolder by default of the software and I can you know selectively click any one that I want to load or I can hold one and hold shift and pick a whole grouping of them and hit open. Since I've already loaded them there's no need for me to load them but I can also click Add Folder. 
And when I do this, I can specify any other folder or subfolder. I can go to contents, I can go to styles, imperial, and I can pick whatever from is in here. Or I can also click the A360 button to get to my online cloud location to uh, pull data from there as well. Another nice feature that's new in AutoCAD Architecture 2017 is the ability for you to grip manipulate a roof, for example, the outlines of it. So I have a standard roof here that I can select and now you have a lot of little grips that are available and it's just like I said before with the hatch command you can put your mouse over and you can offset you can add a vertex and start to really play with the design of this if you will uh, you have the ability to remove that vertex you have the ability to convert it to an arc and specify the shape of the arc as well and if it's an arc you can convert it back to a line so there's are some neat little um, grip manipulation based tools to help you modify and tweak your roof outline once you've created it. And the last new feature in Autodesk AutoCAD Architecture 2017 is the ability to create shapes when you're working with certain objects. <clears throat> For example, if I start the wall command, if you look down here in the command line, there is a create type feature here that if I click, I can actually choose rectangular, circle, polygon, or p-line. So let's say I pick rectangular, I can just draw a rectangular shape and it automatically allows me to draw that shape using the AEC objects. And that's for walls. Hit escape twice to get out of that. Um, curtain walls function really the same way. You just head over to pick curtain wall. And again, click create type and pick what you want, say circle, and then it automatically allows you to draw them. And you can zoom in, we can see. We have railings as well. So if we head over to the design tab and look for railings, um, you may see them, you may not. Let's see, there it is, railings. And again, you have create type. I can choose polygon. I can specify how many number of sides. I'll keep seven is fine. Uh, specify the center of the polygon, I'll just pick somewhere like say here and inscribe or circumscribe so it's very similar to the polygon command and then it'll say specify the radius of the circle so I'll click like this and it automatically allows me to create the railing based upon that polygonal shape <clears throat> and the same feature functions exactly the same way when it comes to working with roofs and roof slabs and so those are the new features in the AutoCAD Architecture 2017 software. Thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you got some benefit out of it. And if you need any uh, assistance or have any questions on the new features or any of the Autodesk products, if you need training, you need support, you need uh, customization or implementation, uh, or any other particular service, just get in touch with us um, and ask for me or ask for your account representative, and we'd be more than willing to help you out. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and I hope to have another presentation for you guys to see next time.